I'm sure you've heard Muslims talk about their science of hadith, where they have an entire field, a discipline, dedicated to narrators of hadith. I'm sure you've brought a hadith to a Muslim before just to be met with them saying, that's weak, it's a weak hadith, it's unreliable, da'if. One of the narrators whose hadith are graded as da'if, or weak, or unreliable, is none other than Hafs. Within this so-called science, the number one version of the Qur'an today, the most popular version of the Qur'an used throughout the Muslim world, the narrator of this version of the Qur'an, Hafs, is classified as untrustworthy, unreliable, a liar, and even worse. That's right, the same methodology that Muslims utilize in order to determine which chain of narration or which transmission or isnad is reliable also informs us that their most popular Qur'an comes from a lying, untrustworthy source. This is according to Muslim scholars, not atheists, not agnostics, not Jews, not Christians. Muslim scholars, such as popular hadith scholars, such as people like Imam Muslim, Imam Bukhari, and other big name scholars in Islam. Without further ado, here's Farid or Sheikh Farid. Wait, Farid, Sheikh Farid. Sheikh Farid know that, knows that. Sah? Sheikh Farid. Sheikh Farid. In relation to Hafs, the scholars of Hadith spoke about him in relation to the narration of Hadith. Uh -huh. So like Al-Bukhari said, Taraku, and also Muslim Khan Matruk. But some scholars of Hadith also claim that he was a Kadhab. So how do we deal with that? Good. Like Ibn Khirash mm -hmm. and others. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there are two people who have, uh, or at least two people who who has who has been attributed to that have uh, said that Hafs is a liar. Um, the first is Yahya bin Ma'in, and the second is Ibn Khiraj. That's the main concern, um, because Yahya bin Ma'in is a major scholar of Hadith. So how is it possible that this major scholar of Hadith referred to? Hafs as a liar. Yahya said, this Abu Umar is a liar, referring to Hafs. Now, I want you to keep a couple of things in mind here. Firstly, this statement is actually a statement in which he's saying that Hafs's recitation is the best recitation from Asim. Okay? Now, imagine that. Imagine referring to someone as a liar but saying that his recitation is the best recitation. So what does that mean? That means that there are no specific issues with the recitation of Hafs. Listen to what Sheikh Farid says here. He doesn't dispute the fact that his scholars call Hafs a liar. He just says that this one scholar, Yahya bin Ma'in, says that Hafs is a liar and then says that Hafs narration of Asim is the best narration or recitation as Sheikh Farid says. He's a liar, but he's the best student that Asim had. To this, Sheikh Farid concludes that there are no specific issues with the recitation of Hafs. Imagine if I say that I went to the store, and in the store I saw a lot of potatoes. Let's say that they're old, getting spoiled. Some of them have spuds on them, and some of them are beginning to molt but I pick one of them and I say that that's the best potato out of the bunch. Does that mean that it's an actual good quality potato or that it's just better than the others? If someone that is classified as a liar by your own methodology of determining who's reliable in the best recitation of the Quran that you have, then imagine how bad the others were. The best is a liar, how bad are the others? Your best and most popular Qur'an that you have today is from a liar. Whoa. How do you Muslims accept this? Let's continue on and hear Sheikh Farid's challenge. People that make this claim, they often repeat this claim, but they never bring an example. And it's something I say in the comments all the time in my videos. I say, yeah, where did Hafs lie? Show me an example of Hafs lying. And, and they never provide so, an example. Here's an example from a source that includes your Yahya, the big Hadith scholar. 
And there are many sources that mention this. Huffs used to steal books from people and copy them. Then he would give completely fake stories without any evidence. He would lie, steal, plagiarize, all according to your own scholars. So you want an example of how he lied? This is how, through his thievery, plagiarism, and creating fake stories. And this is the guy you trust to take the Quran from. I encourage you to sincerely consider what was said in this video and come to the one who never lied, who can never lie, Jesus, who can save you from your sins. Repent from Islam, repent from your sins, turn to Jesus, trust in him and his finished work on the cross. Trust the one who rose from the dead, not the thief and not the liar. Sheikh Farid. Amimi, I'm going to go to the